Hello, Hello. 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 Hello.
Ladies and gentlemen, with great pleasure, I want to welcome to the room newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Hesselwell. Telling. 
but she made a very good boy at that time. When thinking about this uh, speech today, it occurred to me that it is, that it is perhaps um, in no small way attributable to me that I played a significant part in forming the character you see before you today. <laughs> I encouraged her to be adventurous, bold, determined, in the face of difficulty, to be an individual, to be true to her friends, never to give secrets away, and all those wonderful attributes you see in her today. And this she has used, I know, throughout her very successful life. I shut her in cupboards without the light on. I trapped her fingers indoors without making her cry. We once, and I think this was probably my best, broke out of what the Brownlows had. They had a caged sandpit. I mean, can you believe it now? Parents out there with your children. We were absolutely locked in to this thing. Um, but I managed to make it. And uh, we went together to, uh, to the brook, didn't we, really? We did, Which we did. was probably a fast-running stream fast at that time. Stream. Anyway, it seemed like a river. Um, but um, I did my best to drown it, but uh, she <laughs> came out okay. Sorry? Oh, it was January. Oh, well, and you knew you were naughty as soon as you saw us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to that. <laughs> the very best thing we had, um, as I remember, was using the straw stack we had as some sort of helter skelter. But it didn't have sides. So sadly, one day, we were, you know, I, I had explained to Liz how to do it and how to you know, get around the corners. But she went straight off the edge. It would seem like six feet. It was probably only two or three feet. But she landed completely on her backside, a bit like she did when she fell off the pencil. Um, the pencil was my pony. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, little known to me, I could see she'd hurt herself, you know, a little, but I wasn't too worried. But I did sort of try and persuade her that the best thing was not to tell anybody. Um, well, I see her other bits, but anyway, she managed to keep a secret for several days from her parents, uh, despite being, as I understand it, in some pain. She was really game for almost anything, and I don't recall her objecting. Contrary to reports that I was the naughty one, I'm pleased to say that Sheila recently upgraded me to mischievous, not naughty, so I think that's a you know, slight advantage. Plus, I believe Liz was always a willing accomplice, probably glad simply not to be bossed around by her elder sister. <laughs> <laughs> so, having had time to reflect, Sheila, I think you've got a lot to thank me for. <laughs> I expect with this nature versus nurture debate that's going on, you thought you were to blame for bringing up this willful, determined, and individual woman, the one with the coloured hair, the tattoos, and all that that goes on, and yet all the time, it's my fault. <laughs> Again. I'll remember that. <laughs> Nevertheless, Johnny, I didn't manage to kill her, and so she's here today, thankfully in one piece, and if you have any trouble with her in the coming years, like Sheila, you can always blame me. <laughs> this has been a wonderful occasion to be celebrated uh, and to have been part of. It's delightful to see the matriarch of the family here, Sheila. I know, Liz, today you will have had thoughts of and be thinking of your father, Don, today. He will be around us somewhere, not necessarily in his wellies, as it's been pretty dry lately, but no doubt accompanied by his dogs, possibly some sheep, and, from my memory, smiling that wonderful, benign type of smile he had, knowingly just being happy with everything that has gone on. I'd like to say we, we, 
I think the Brownlows and the Caswells, who have been close friends for years, yes. have been very lucky in our parents and our upbringings. We had a lovely time, yes. more fortunate than most, and we thank you wherever you are. I would like to finish with some pithy, amusing words about marriage. Um, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> I think it's lovely that you both found happiness together um, in what must be described as our later years. Uh, I think the vicar alluded to it a little in the service today, Johnny. I have to say to you, if I can give you any advice, and that's that you have um, to learn how to lose arguments, even if you're right. <laughs> I can only say to you both that like everything in life, you get out what you put in. I'm going to say Judith, Polly and I wish you all the best of luck in the rest of your life. And I would like to propose a toast to Liz and Johnny, but coupled with Sheila and the family. <coughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave the rest of the years to you. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much for uh, remembering my late grandfather, because that brings me quite nicely into what I would like to say first of all, which is what an honour it's been to stand in for Don today. Absolutely, yeah. He would have been extremely proud of his daughter today, and he would have been extremely happy at her marriage to John. He would have been proud of her, as am I, for a number of reasons. Firstly, for the spectacular events that has been the day thus far, organised as it has been to such an acute degree of perfection <laughs> that it drove her own daughters and daughter-in-law to the very brink of insanity <laughs> without quite tipping them over the edge. <laughs> but he would have been proud of her indomitable spirit in doing things her own way with her own unique style. He would have been proud to witness the expression of hers and John's personalities in making today the occasion that it is. He was proud that he and my grandmother raised somebody so capable of going out into the world and making such a positive contribution to it. He would have been proud at the culmination of her teaching career in 2015 to dedicate one's professional life so entirely to the development and assistance of others is, speaking as her son, something that is utterly inspirational and the very best of examples to follow. I hope that when I retire that I can look back over my own career with the same degree of deserving satisfaction that she is entitled to. My grandfather would have also been proud at the platform his daughter has built for herself to enjoy her retirement. He would have been delighted to see her continued commitment to the enduring bonds of family and friendship that are evidenced by all of you here present today. And just as was the case for Naomi, Esther and I, with himself and our grandmother, he would have been proud how Elizabeth has created an environment in which her own grandchildren <laughs> are loved, nurtured and supported within a happy, secure family atmosphere 
that John is now a part of. He would have been happy that she has met her kindred spirit, because, as she told us from the start, in John she has found her soulmate. Their relationship has moved very quickly, but when you find your ideal partner, sometimes that's the way it goes. And I'm very happy that she did meet John. In the time that I've got to know him, I've found him to be a decent, interesting, warm-hearted person who treats her with love, kindness and respect. So to John, a heartfelt welcome to the family. Thank you. Hey, hey. The two of you have a fantastic foundation on which you will be very happy together. And you have a great deal to look forward to. You can build your home together. But remember, a home is not simply a single location, but is much more than that, including anywhere you have loved ones. You both always have a home with Zarina and I in Middlesex. Remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a little bloody yeah. <laughs> As you do with the rest of your friends and family elsewhere. You can travel and experience the world and all that it has to offer. You can be around the grandchildren as they grow up. <laughs> you can watch the Joseph learn to ride a bike. And you can watch Isabel learn to talk. You can spend your retirement as a couple. Enjoy quality time with one another and build upon the union that has brought you both together. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you all to join me in a toast to the bride and groom. Celebrate John wedding Beth, who he hasn't known long. It's a year since they met on a site on the net, so what can possibly go wrong? <laughs> we hope for no marital friction, as knife throwing is an It would not seem quite right if Beth's wedding night was spent dodging knives in the kitchen. <laughs> Beth said to John, I'm retired. John said to Beth, that's inspired. I'm doing that too, but if I did it with you, all our rockets would surely be fired. <laughs> this, is, this is the last one, so you're alright. <laughs> so they're married now and I'm perplexed. What the bit that comes next? They're quite old as we see, so raise your glasses and say after me, good health and good luck with the sex. <laughs>
Well, follow that. I work, used to work with the, at the surgery with John and um, I was asked to do this actually very late in the evening of uh, John's wedding, uh, wedding? John's um, farewell do from the surgery um, and uh, well let's be frank a drink had been taken <laughs> um, so <laughs> unsure of myself I asked around amongst my colleagues for, for some words just to get me started. And um, this is what I got. Kind. Honest. Sincere. Compassionate. Genuine and empathetic. Possesses a belief in doing the right thing. Exceptionally generous. Integrity. Flexible and creative. A little eccentric. <laughs> a gentle giant. A true gentleman. A great team worker. Passionate. Full of integrity and very intelligent. Caring as demonstrated in the job he did for the past 17 years. So I went home that night, a little unsteadily, but nevertheless confident that um, I had at least the basis of something to work with when the day came. And that lasted right up until yesterday afternoon when I saw the order of service. And I realized that by the time it got to be me to speak, all of those words would have been used and used many times to describe Johnny. He kept that quiet <laughs> to describe a Johnny because he is as appreciated by you as he is by us. So I thought I would just wanted to focus on that last phrase. Caring as demonstrated by the work he did for the last 17 years. John, as many of you will know, spent 17 years working in Dr. Hickey's surgery for homeless people in central London. Working with, according to their health statistics, some of the poorest people, not just in this country, but arguably in the world. And 17 years is a long time. That's 17 years out of the 30 years that the surgery has existed since Dr. Mary Hickey set it up on the 27th of October 1987. 30 years ago yesterday, we celebrated much of it. And 17 years is a long time of service, a long time to give. In fact, I go into Norway prison on the weekends. I do actually know several people doing less time for murder. <laughs> and in that 17 years, John, Johnny, I'll get used to it eventually. Johnny <laughs> has been a great servant to the homeless people of Westminster. Um, I think amply demonstrated by the great sorrow that so many of them felt when the word read round that he was leaving. Even though that he was leaving for joy, um, they really felt the loss. And in fact, one of the things that made all our consultations yesterday so much longer than they should have been was each of our patients needing to express their personal thanks and gratitude for what had John had done for them. Johnny, I'll get it right eventually. <laughs> had done for them over so many years. And many of you will have seen the huge card in which many of them inscribed their personal gratitude and thanks for what he did for them as individuals. For those of us who remain, we know that we are losing a great colleague. What I should have done yesterday afternoon was take a photograph of our waiting room. <coughs> Friday afternoon in Dr. Hickey surgery tend to be a bit busy. Friday afternoon without John is something else. <laughs> so we know that we are losing a great colleague. We trust that we are not losing a great friend. Um, so there's just one thing I'd actually like to say personally to John. Um, it's 
a quotation. It actually comes from a funeral speech. And you might wonder about the appropriateness of this on a happy occasion like this. But bear with me. Um, it comes from that greatest of all contemporary spiritual guides and interpreters of funeral speeches. As those of you who know me will know, I'm referring, of course, to Clint Eastwood. <laughs> and to his monumental study of human loyalty, the outlaw Josie Wales. You, believe it or not, I do actually have somebody who has a PhD in that film. <laughs> and if you've seen the film, you'll know that it's set uh, towards the end of the American Civil War. And Josie Wales and his friend Jamie go through many hardships, many sufferings, many battles, many dangers together. And it binds them together into an absolute rock solid relationship. And at the end, Jamie dies. And Josie Wales stands over the body and says this. I can't do the accent, so just imagine. He says this. Lord, I'm not a speechifying man, but somebody needs to say something. I'm giving them the best burial that I can. This year, lad was born in a time of fighting and dying. He never turned his back on his kin. He never turned his back on a friend. He never turned his back on anyone. I rode with him, and I ain't got no complaints. Johnny served for the surgery for 17 years. We ain't got no complaints. <laughs> together for many years to come and at the end of that time we trust you will have no complaints. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, my dad, who's obviously not here. 
my mum and dad, who are not here, and my sister. And the other one which has to go, I have to mention, is my dear friend Sally from Long Bennington, who passed away two weeks ago. Um, really sad. She was an amazing person, and she should have been here, and she wasn't, obviously. But I think, you know, could not mention that she was here. Probably. So we'll let's go on to more positive things. Okay, so we're going on. I'm starting, we're doing a double act, but it's more me, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we, hang on a moment, I've got to I read Johnny's internet profile, and that on an internet site called OKCupid, which had some interesting date before I met Johnny, that's all I'm going to say, and <laughs> <laughs> I read this profile. I got fed up with trying to meet people locally. It wasn't getting on very well, so I went to it further afield. Got me, the practical person, got a daughter in London, a son in London, another one in Leeds. And I thought, I'll go to London, see, you know, spread the wings out. And I read this profile. You'll notice I've used a lot of quotes in my profile. However, I have not used them to impress people or to show how intelligent I am. Rather, I've carefully, carefully chosen them because they offer a view into my psyche. What follows is a candid account of me and my life. I hope I've written with a certain amount of humour, but above all, with integrity. So, I'm not going to read the talk, by the way. Some of the things are there. I'm honest with myself and others. I respect other people's choices of lifestyle. I don't like pettiness. I think life is very short, so I don't like to waste any. If I can help it, I like to travel to other countries, especially exotic ones. I want to taste as many of life's fruits as I can, and the experience is so much better when shared with another special person. I'm currently compiling my experiences to have for I die this, and it's a long one. So, I've been employed in social care work since 1995. It's been a rewarding career that allows me to work on my own initiative. Uh, I've passed my 60th birthday, birthday and I've been working on the next chapter of my life. I want this to be performing arts and teaching those arts. I love burlesque and circus, and I practice knife and tomahawk throwing, <laughs> fire eating, eating and performing, and slip cracking. <laughs> in order to get some performance and all too smaller. And more than one person was hoping to see me tie me to a big circle thing and throw knives at me. I'm told I'm good at being charming and saying nice things. I don't really know the truth of this, but I do know I never say anything I don't mean. I'm very good at giving and receiving. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. First things people usually notice about me, obviously height, that I'm eccentric. Seriously, though, my immediate set of friends don't know anything about whip cracking, knife throwing, fire eating, so they think I'm a bit different. <laughs> Whereas people who perform in those arts think I'm perfectly normal. I have a wide range of books I like to read, and he, boy does he read. I like reading biographies and have read loads. Some of my favourite quotes, you must have chaos within you to give birth to a dancing star. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. All the stories of my mind begin in my blood. Whatever you are, be a good one. The joy of life consists in the exercise of one's energies, continual growth, constant change, the enjoyment of every new experience. To stop means simply to die. Alistair Crowley. Six things I could never do without. Air, water, food, shelter, warmth, and an intelligent woman to laugh with. And we do laugh a lot, don't we, darling? I'm going to shut up and hand over to him now. <laughs> I really didn't know Lizzie was going to say any of that. <laughs> <laughs> you did not talk, you <laughs> Okay, so, so I'll just say a little bit about um, kind of how we met and everything. We're... Good on you, Phil. That's the creed, Johnny, but Ali gave me. Right, 
I would, I would rather be ashes than dust. I would rather that my spark should burn out in a brilliant blaze than it should be uh, stifled by dry rot. I would rather be a superb meteor, every atom of me in magnificent glow, than a sleepy and permanent planet. The function of man is to live, not to exist. I shall not waste my days trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. Shall we leave the rest of my profile because it's going to go on a bit Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to jump rope. <laughs> <laughs> so, we get to the bit where we started. Um, yeah. going right, so, having read all that, I decided to message this person because I thought he looked. So I said, um, I can't read it because I can't. I said something like, wow, Johnny, what an amazing profile. And I can't read the rest of this in, in uh, anyway. I sent him a very short message, and he sent me this message back. Can I read it? Yeah. Hi, Beth. Thank you for your lovely message. I do like being unconventional. I think it keeps me feeling young. I really like your profile and your pictures. I bet you're a really nice person. And I think you would benefit from having an unconventional adventure. <laughs> I find it thrilling and good for the soul to explore the controversial areas of life. I'd love to get to know you, so please write soon. I live in London, where the unconventional is never far away. I'll write about some of my unconventional practices if you'd like me to. My very best regards, John. Not Johnny at that point. <laughs> I forgot to mention I also love to travel, but you're retiring next year. Done a fair bit of travel, but haven't explored South America yet. Chat soon, John. And then we met, didn't we? We did, yeah. And so, <laughs> and it, it all happened really quickly, to be honest with you. And we met on September the... 13th. 13th. King's uh, Cross Station. King's Cross Station. And um, we, we went for a, a meal, and we went for a drink afterwards. And we kind of, well, do you want to say that bit about it? <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting on a table and he just stroked my arm and I just, I just knew, you know, it was, so we carried on. Um, we then started, two weeks later, start, no, um, six weeks later we started to plan our world trip, didn't we? We did, yeah. yeah. But, but there, there, there was lots of um, messaging backwards and forwards. Yeah. And then we had a weekend in Cambridge, and then after that, 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 that was it, and it was serious. And then I proposed on December the 27th, outside of the range, just outside. <laughs> yes! Do that, I had to go and ask um, Sheila, Liz's mother's permission because to do it properly, which is exactly Down what on I did. Down on one knee. Down on one knee. Yeah, because I did think about saying no. I don't want to sign the joking. <laughs> yeah. No, but Lizzie gave me her, her full permission, which, Sheila. you know. Sheila, sorry. And um, yeah, so that, that 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 was it really. Um, and we started making plans. Um, we met various each other's friends. I met went to Mary's, Dr. Mary Hickey's birthday party, where she was given a dress that she's wearing tonight. So I met all of the crew from the surgery. So thank you to all of you for travelling that way. A lot of you have travelled a long, long way. Uh, today to be here, so thank you so much. Um, we started, oh yeah, one of the things that happened, I had certain members of my family saying to me, what would you be saying if I was doing this? You met somebody and then four months later you announced that you're getting married. So there was more than one person. You got the same thing, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, and, um, and, and you expect your friends to do that as well because, you, you know, it was all happening really quickly. Um, it, but in this case, it, we, we, we just, we, we knew, and, we you know, know, so there, there wasn't any doubt. Was there? And the family, I rang Peter, Naomi and Esther, and 
I had very positive responses from all of you, didn't I? Mm. They, they, they really love them. I think it's well, I think the days they say they're doing when your behaviours are doing. Um, so, um, oh, when we went on holiday in February, apparently Johnny says he's hard to think this when we were at Christmas, we celebrated Christmas. You said. Oh, yeah, um, okay, yeah, but I didn't mention it to you for a little bit longer, yeah. did I? But, um, yeah, and, and, and Chris, the vicar in the church, alluded to it, didn't he, that I'd said, I'm also inheriting a family. But that's exactly what it felt like, and I've never had such a warm welcome from anybody other than Liz's family, you know, and, and, and I'm just really so chuffed. Good job, John. Yeah. 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 Yeah, started looking for wedding dresses and things. Ten pound at a charity shop. Seriously, <laughs> put the lace on, got the lace put on, but it was. Uh, I mean, some of you, you, did you, you, yeah, quite a few people saw the original dress, and I got a very clever lady who blinged it up for us. But um, Beth, Beth is the best charity shop. I love shop charity I've never <laughs> so good. Yeah, we love charity shops. Yeah, don't we? Yeah. We do, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think that's about what we've got to do. Oh, right. Oh, good. He's just watching at the right time. Right, I'm going to disappear over here just for a moment. Oh, yeah. Where are they all? Right, now, we couldn't have done this today without, I'm sure you will agree, Isabel and Joseph. Yeah. Oh, are we going to get something now? Yes, Jack. I've got lots of hang on now. I have to, I did these a few days ago. Oh, right. So, Joseph, I wonder, I wonder if I've got a present in here for you. I wonder. I wonder if I've got a present. Oh, my goodness. <laughs>
I know the ushers <laughs> worked incredibly hard. Um, I picked them all very carefully. <coughs> we picked them all very carefully for good organisation, excellent interpersonal skills, and loud voices. <laughs> so, hang on, I can't get you undone, but. Uh, I've been going. So, just a small token of our appreciation for everything you've done. So, oh, Nadine, you're here as well. Yeah, you've got something as well. Well, then, Nadine has a game. She's not being an usher, but she has kept me sane for the last few weeks now. Pop it round.
okay. Right, okay. Well, I'll give Paul. You can pass it to me and I'll pass it on. Good Lord, is it doing this? No, it's not. But uh, I just got. Um, Paul, thank you so much. And Paul needs. Right, we're still down here, still got things to go. Alright, now let's go. Let's go. Um, well, it just says, basically, thank you to both Paul, who's been a very patient brother, and I'm sure I love the poetry. That's all for the creative poems of comedy. And my son, who stood in for my dad. And I'm sure that's a very dashing figure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my three children, will you all come out, please? My three children, Peter, Naomi, and Esther. Um, now they think it's going to be an expensive gift, but it's actually not. <laughs> Handwriting, this is what I knew. <laughs> 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 